A fundamental promise of the NHS that it will be there for us when we need it has been broken. Broken by a decade of underinvestment, by a disastrous top-down reorganisation by the Tories and by ditching the reforms made by the last Labour government. All of this meant that when the pandemic hit, our NHS was on its knees and hit harder than any other comparable healthcare system. It's not just that the Tories didn't fix the roof while the sun was shining. They doused the house in petrol, left the gas on, and COVID just lit, lit, lit the match. That's why, that's why millions are stuck on waiting lists. That's why ambulances don't arrive on time. That's why you can't see your GP. Never forgive, never forget, never let the Tories do it again. Look, I know the doctor's diagnosis can sometimes be hard to hear. But if you don't have an accurate diagnosis, you won't provide the correct prescription. The NHS is broken, but it's not beaten, and together we will turn it around. And make no mistake, the Tories had a plan for the NHS. Mismanaged decline. A status quo so poor, people are forced to raid their savings to go private. A crisis so bad that seven in ten people now expect charges for NHS care to be introduced. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Over my dead body, we will always defend our NHS as a public service, free at the point of use, so that whenever you fall ill, you never have to worry about the bill. We can only deliver recovery through reform. Without action on prevention, the NHS will be overwhelmed. Without reform to services, we'll end up putting in more cash for poorer results. That's the choice. Reform or die, and we choose reform. Since the general election, we've hit the ground running. We, hit, we inherited the farce of newly qualified GPs facing unemployment. Patients can't get a GP appointment while GPs couldn't get a job. We cut red tape, found the funding, and we'll have a thousand more GPs treating patients. That's the difference a Labour government makes. Ending the junior doctors' strikes and building a new relationship with resident doctors was central to our commitment to deliver 40,000 more appointments a week. But as well as getting staff back to work, we need to get them working at the top of their game. We're sending crack teams of top clinicians to hospitals across the country to roll out reforms developed by surgeons to treat more patients and cut waiting lists. And I can announce today that the first 20 hospitals targeted by these teams will be in areas with the highest numbers of people off work sick, because our reforms are not only focused on delivering our health mission, but also moving the dial on our growth mission too. We will take the best of the NHS to the rest of the NHS, get sick Brits back to health and back to work. That's the difference a Labour government makes.